Hello. Um, I decided to record this quick or short video um, just because it may be useful to some of you. I don't know. Um, sharing is caring, I guess. Uh, and that this is the 10th time that I'm re-recording my voice because there's, I always make mistake or, um, you know, I don't know exactly what to say. So I say, okay, it restart. So that should be my final cut, hopefully. Um, and it's a very, very simple thing, nothing crazy. So the, the old point is that I was working on a shot um, a couple of days ago, uh, and I noticed that the quality of the background was not matching the quality of the foreground. It's, it was on a personal project. Um, so I zoomed in and I say, hmm, the background has a lot of compression artifacts, a lot of pixelation, you know, uh, blocky stuff going on, whereas my foreground seems pretty smooth and high res, so how can I degrade my foreground to match it closer to uh, my background? So I, that that's the whole thing and we're trying to do here. Um, I want to find a better area where you can clearly see it. Let me, there you go. So you see that if I zoom in here, you can start to see some block of compression, okay? and. At the same zoom level, if we check our foreground, where the heck is our foreground? Oh, it's here. <laughs> I couldn't find it. Um, you know, it doesn't have the same artifacts that we see in the background. So how can we try to match that? A quick way to achieve this is to break the concatenation. So we can basically move pixel around and then break the concatenation between two nodes. And this is gonna alter the filtering applied to pixels, and the result is a low quality image, meaning softening or sharpening. So um, a quick way to achieve this is to simply create a reformat node. So I have a reformat here. I can plug it after my pre-multiplied. So this is our pre-multiplied foreground. And there is a lot of popping in my microphone. Sorry about that. So I should avoid saying P. Um, and we're working with a 4K DCP as our source plate, and we can, you know, go down to, I don't know, full HD, for instance. So if I check this, now I have basically reformatted down my plate, and I can duplicate this reformat, apply it after, and this second reformat, we can go up again to 4K DCP, that's the same resolution as before. So technically, nothing happened, okay? If I switch between these two, nothing happened in terms of format size, but also in terms of pixel quality. So if I check this comp on top of our background, I can turn this on and off, and you see that we are not altering the quality of our pixel because of the concatenation. But in this case, we want to alter the quality of our pixel. We want to, you know, break the concatenation so that we can see more jagged edges and stuff like that. So a quick way to do this is just to break the concatenation by placing whatever node breaks concatenation. So in this case, I can just place a blur. And by doing so, you can, you can immediately see that we are losing um, quality, basically. We are softening our pixel quite a lot. And we can control, let me close everything, we can control the type of softening by going in the last reformat, and by changing the filter, you know, you can go to impulse, and now we are really creating this, um, you know, jagged hedges and pixelation and so on. So this is one method. Um, sometimes maybe enough, but sometimes you can clearly see some block of pixel, some, you know, hard hedges, like here. In this case, you know, I'm uh, zooming on this branch, and you can see that there is something here, some you know, square, some block of compression um, that are very visible. And they have a different size than what we created here. So a different way or a different approach to create the same effect is by using the blocky node. The blocky node is a node that you cannot find by simply typing its name uh, like that. It doesn't appear. Uh, it's hidden and you need to, you know, call it in another way. So by pressing X on your keyboard, you can type blocky. I, I tried before to not say, you know, something wrong. And there you go. So this node here, it basically apply 
this type of effect. So it's basically pixelating your image and you can decide the size of your, uh, of your square by increasing or reducing this. Uh, and now it's the interesting thing. Uh, if I apply directly my blocky here, okay, and I check this, obviously I'm getting a lot of uh, a lot of the square, and maybe that's too much, okay. I don't want to alter so much the quantity. I just want to see a little bit of a hint of this square pattern going on. So a, a better way to achieve the same result but with more control is by doing this. We can apply our blocky, then we can create a merge. And we can divide the source plate. Okay, so in this case, uh, we are keeping this um, uh, process that we applied. But uh, you can just, you know, do something like that. Avoid completely the reformat trick. Okay, and in this case, I want to keep it. So, in other words, we want to divide. Okay, the blocky and the not blocky image, right? And we end up with something like that. That's very bad, That's something very unpleasant to see. But the interesting part is when we are multiplying this back again. Okay, so we can just multiply this back again. And now based on the direction of the division, now we are dividing A and B, whereas A, where A is the source plate and B is the blocky, right? So we're getting this result. We're also getting some, um, some sharpening going on. And by reducing the multiplication or the mix in the multiply node, we can reduce the intensity of this effect. Okay, so now we are damaging quite a lot the hedges of our image, but we are also introducing this square pattern. If I switch this, so shift X, I'm getting again a different result and that's probably what I was looking for. So if I increase the mix to one, we have a lot of blocky, a lot of blocks, a lot of pixelation. So I can just turn this down so that we have just a feeling of this compression going on, right? But it's not so obvious, right? And the interesting part is that we can also just apply this around the hedges if we want. Okay, so I can just take my alpha here. This is our alpha. Okay, and I can multiply my effect through the alpha. So basically, I'm masking where the where uh, I'm masking the effect through the alpha. Okay, and nothing changed. But if I apply an invert. Okay, now you can see that the inside is less affected than the outside. So the hedges are more affected that, than the inside of the character. And then I can use an erode, you know, nothing new, just to control how much of this effect I want to get inside my element, my, my foreground, I mean. So I have, you know, uh, alter quite a lot the quality of these hedges and also the quality of overall of the image, okay? That's something that we, we need to control. Um, but sometimes that's what we have to do. Sometimes we have to match the quality of our background to the quality of our foreground or vice versa. And these are a couple of methods to achieve uh, this effect. So we can use the concatenation and break the rule to, again, softening more our pixel, okay? And then we can choose the type of softening by changing the filter in the second reformat node. And we can also use the, this old blocky node to basically extract the pattern uh, and then reapply the pattern through a multiplication. And then we can mask where, you know, in which area we want the pattern to be more visible, more prominent or less prominent and so on. Uh, that's pretty much it. I hope that this can be of any interest and uh, can be useful to some of you. Other than that, take good care and uh, speak to you soon. Bye-bye.